I'm Joris Fishman, creator of Carousel. And today, today <coughs> um, I, we have with us, uh, we're very lucky to have with us Mar Mar Malcolm Moran. I'm sorry, <laughs> I stumbled. Um, Malcolm um, had a print ex exhibition in the Center for C Contemporary Printmaking in Norwalk, Connecticut that opened to critical acclaim. And the title of the show was The Beast and His Keeper. Where did you get that title? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, and uh, the title came from uh, a, uh, I've always worked, I've always painted several different types of, of, uh, of animals as metaphors, not as, as because I'm particularly interested in horses or birds per se, I'm interested in the things that they can represent. And um, the beast and his keeper, uh, as it, the idea for the, for the title, uh, came from one of, originated from one of the horse images, uh, which had a rider and the horse uh, not exactly working together. Uh, the horse appeared to be, to be moving in one direction, and the, uh, the rider appeared to be having something else on his mind. Um, uh, so unlike an equestrian horse and rider, these two beings were, were going in different directions. Um, the, the, uh, the image of that, that original image, uh, came from a, an experience I had when I was a child when a horse ran away from me. And uh, he ran away and uh, my family chased after me, but they, they did not keep up with the horse. The horse ran for what I guess was a mile. I was in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. And, uh, and the horse uh, scared me. I was petrified, hanging on for dear life, not sure, sure if I was going to be able to hang on. He was jumping over gullies and, and whatever. And, uh, and after a mile of me hanging on for dear life, he abruptly stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, he stopped because he wanted to eat in, uh, a berry, a little red berry, off of, uh, off of the cactus of the Sonoran mm -hmm. Desert. So they're very tasty little berries. Uh, the Mexicans actually eat them, but the horses do too. And uh, I guess they're like, uh, sort of like pomegranates, but, mm -hmm. but they're hard to get to because the cactus has prickly things all mm -hmm. over it. But for whatever reason, horses know exactly how to get to them. And, uh, and he, he stopped to eat the pomegranate, or the berry, and, uh, and, and there I was having survived what I thought was a near-death experience uh, in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, eating uh, berries off of cactuses with a, with a, with a horse. And uh, I actually got so enamored, or so, uh, he looked like he was having such a good time eating the berries, I decided I really needed a berry too, so <laughs> I started, uh, I, I, I attempted to get to the berries. I, didn't, I never got to them, but, but in any case, I, I had an, an experience at that moment with, with me and that horse where we sort of were on the same page, so to speak. And it just left a very big impression on me. It wasn't just the fact that it was a near-death experience. It was also the after effect of the, of the uh, horse um, having a good time in the middle of the desert and, and, uh, and sort of inviting me to do it with mm -hmm. him. And uh, it just was an image that stuck with me. And, 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 and when I started painting, uh, painting these uh, images of riders and horses, um, it just is something that stayed with me. And it's been a metaphor which uh, is interesting for me because it's been able, it, it sort of is a, it's a way to get at that urge that we all have to sort of want to be in control of everything, but mm -hmm. never quite be able to, to have control of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the beast and his keeper. The beast is maybe sometimes the horse, sometimes it's the man, sometimes mm -hmm. the horse is the keeper, sometimes the man is the keeper. Mm -hmm. We're not always in charge. And um, that image of not being in charge, but on the other hand, wanting to be in charge, uh, is just something that was always uh, something I had to express in my work, and I've tried to do that. And mm -hmm. I, this was a very good vehicle for me to do that. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, what um, other experiences have you had with horses? 
Well, again, the image is not always, it's not so much the experiences I've had with horses. I'm really not a horse person. I should probably not admit that because I, can't, I think I live in the middle of horse country and people who might buy my horses might want to buy them because I have a, a knowledge of horses. I really don't have much of a knowledge of horses, but I have a, a feeling of, a, of affinity to horses. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, uh, that I, uh, when I was in art school at the Rhode Island School of Design, um, one of my professors made me, uh, he saw that I was drawing horses even back then, and so I had to spend a whole semester studying George Stubbs' horses. George Stubbs', Stubbs is the English master of horse painting. Mm -hmm. uh, many of his paintings are at the Yale Museum in, in New Haven. Uh, so I had to study uh, horse skeletons and horse muscle, muscle structures for the longest of times, and so I think they're embedded in my head. Uh, but they've just always been a very good metaphor for, uh, for lots of different things. Uh, this most recent work uh, at the Ridgefield Library uh, includes some horses where uh, they have a rider, but the rider and the horse are in unison and are going, going along together quite well, but they have a weightiness to them that other horses I've had don't. These are very heavy horses. Um, so the horse embodied the whole idea of gravity for me, of, mm -hmm. of just being on this earth. Um, we're here, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And horses are here, <laughs> and uh, the fact that, uh, that that that's an idea that the physicality and the the, the, the grav there's, there's something about gravity which defines physicality to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not spirits flying around the sky. We're we're here on this earth, two feet on the ground, and if you're a horse, four feet on the ground, and and I, I tried to get that in a picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the horses that are in the Ridgefield show, actually, there's several of them that are, are doing that. I have other horses doing other things. Um, some of them get to be, to get to the point where they don't look like horses very much at all. They look like abstractions of horses. And you can tell they're horses, but they, they, the image changes a good bit depending mm -hmm. on what's going on in my, my, my mind at the time. But, um, that's, that's generally the horse image. It's, just, it's a vehicle for me to express things that are important to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons they're, they're so good is because they always involve, they, they don't always involve, but they can involve a rider. And the rider is, is, is that other person. So they're, 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 they're two, it's a play with two people in the play. Mm -hmm. um, and they're equal. equal? And I'm equal to the, to the horse sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the horse gets the better of me, and sometimes I get the better of the horse. Mm -hmm. Usually the horse is, usually the horse has an upper hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been my experience with horses. Is they, they tend to do what they want when they, when they do it, and, and, uh, and you're along for the ride. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of life is like that. And it can be a pleasure. Oh, I like pleasurable experiences, too. Mm -hmm. I tend to remember the less than ple pleasurable experiences more, but I, I've, I've been known to, to paint, uh, paint pleasurable experiences as well. So you've had different horses, but what other animals have you? Um... Well, um, you know, I have painted birds uh, and, and goats, and um, the goat image has been an important image because um, I, I have an affinity to goats because they're so, they're so individualistic. They, 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 every goat has a different shape, size, face. Mm -hmm. You put 20 of them in a room and you could name them and you'd never forget their names. Uh, they're all individuals and uh, I'm big on individualism. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, uh, among people it's a good thing and I think among goats it's a good thing. So again, it's a vehicle for me to express an idea mm -hmm. which is, um, for whatever reason, uh, we were put on this earth as many different types and in, in, as individual beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time I paint a goat or draw a goat, it, it's, it's different. And I don't really even necessarily have to look at a goat to get the image of a goat that's different from the next goat. Um, they also, um, because I, I, I'll go, I, I, uh, uh, I spent a lot of time reading Greek mythology and, and uh, the Torah, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, and as, and as, many, as many sources for myth as I can. And, um, 
And I, I always was, as much as I'm attracted to goats, I've noticed that, for instance, for, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Torah, uh, they have a very low, low opinion of goats. You, you mm -hmm. want to be a sheep, but not a goat, <laughs> um, at least in the, in, the, in the Old Testament or the Torah. Uh, same, it, it follows in the, in the New Testament. You do not want to be a goat. You don't want to be mm -hmm. described as a goat. Goats aren't treated very well in Greek mythology or Roman mythology either. And this is always very curious to me. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of sticking up for goats here. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody should be not, against them. <laughs> not everybody can be against goats. I mean, come on. <laughs> and what about birds? Do you like birds? Well, the bird image uh, has been very strong. I, I mean, I, I had an experience with, uh, with, with, with a crow once that was, uh, was a very profound experience. Uh, I was going to see somebody who had... Uh, passed away, who was who was sick and was not going to make it, and uh, it was sort of one of my fair. It was my farewell visit, and uh, on the way, uh, I was traveling through the Ninth Ward in New Orleans, which was famous because it was blown away in Hurricane Tr Katrina, and I saw this uh, crow looking at its image in a puddle in the middle of the street, and. Um, the streets of New Orleans are not really streets. They're more like uh, a series of potholes. And, uh, and uh, it, it, it just was a, it, it gave me a, a, a sense of, uh, I had this sense of both a forlorn, forlorn, but also of, there was something of life in that image that, that I couldn't explain, something of depth that I needed in going to say goodbye to somebody who, who was important to me who was dying. Um, that was the first time I started uh, uh, painting that image and drawing that image. Um, the, the, um, but I continued doing it. I, I did actually a little, just, and this had nothing to do with unconscious or subconscious mm -hmm. or whatever, but just going on Google and looking up crows. Mm -hmm. But they, I started reading about crows, and they're fascinating, because one of the things is they, um, they're the only animal, other the other the only the only beast other than uh, humans, that take care of their elderly, and really? I thought <laughs> I thought that was very curious. Um, I liked that. Mm -hmm. uh, they also had this reputation in in the in the art world of being images or or, or um, uh, for, foretelling you know dying, which which uh, which is not also a, which is a myth. So. Mm -hmm. uh, because apparently crows, they, they, they got this reputation because they always, always were showing up in cemeteries. And one of the reasons they apparently show up in cemeteries a lot is because uh, nobody bothers them there. Because there's no, nobody in a cemetery mm -hmm. other than the people who are <laughs> laying to rest. So uh, they, they tend to go there. They also don't ever leave where they, where, where they were born. They, were, they, they, stay, they stay where they were born generation after generation after mm -hmm. generation. And in my own life, I've spent time traveling around a lot, and I was attracted by the thought that there was actually a species of beings that stayed in one place mm -hmm. and didn't have the urge to travel a lot. They found a home. They found a home, and that mm -hmm. attracted me to, to birds. There's something about coming home to a crow mm -hmm. that uh, I appreciated. So I was drawn to draw them, and I've been drawing them ever since. <laughs> And uh, what about houses? Do you ever draw houses? Well, my house, uh, the, uh, the, the house image is another one of the, those recurring images. And I, I think you could talk to any artist anywhere, and they will always say that they have recurring images that they, they, they tend to, to be drawn to. Uh, houses has appeared in my work uh, early on. And the p houses also take many forms. Um, but they always seem to show up in my landscapes. Clusters of houses always so, somehow represent clusters of people mm -hmm. in the houses. Um, I've gone through periods when the houses had no windows or doors. I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but, mm -hmm. but they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I've had uh, you know, houses where the houses were within a landscape and they were crumbling. Uh, I've had uh, images of houses that you could see through. Uh, and they all tend to point to something beyond houses. I mean, uh, these are all metaphors for something that's going on, you know, in my own mind or my own psyche. And art and painting and drawing, for me, are a way of expressing the things that are important to me. They're the things that are important to me out there, and they're the things that are important to me inside. 
and, um, and they help me process. So when I don't understand why something is happening, why I'm moving so much, or why um, I can't s seem to settle in one place, I'll paint a crow or I'll paint a house. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it points to something else. It doesn't always give me an answer, mm -hmm. but it satisfies me. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, uh, you know, my, my work is a little bit, can be a little bit like a journal. I mean, it's, a, it's like a visual journal. Um, I work and, and it, 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 serves, it serves a purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and it lets me kind of know where I'm going. It's a compass. And uh, I never thought of it as a career, which is probably not a good thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's satisfying. What, 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 what you're thinking of is well, satisfying it's, it's, to you. It satisfies, me, it yeah. satisfies me greatly and it gives me, uh, you know, it gives me, uh, it gives me something that I couldn't get in any other form. Um, it informs me of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And I, if, if I tried to write a book, all that would do would be to frustrate me. Wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't help at all. If I tried to, I, I actually, because I, I actually ran my family business for years, uh, you know, making, making a lot of money and, and uh, building a great big business really didn't do it for me either. It wasn't terrible, but it, was mm -hmm. a, it wasn't the thing that drove me. And um, so I've always had to, I've had to do this. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's been something which has uh, uh, just been very important to me. Right. And I'm uh, very happy also to be able to pick it up again because there was a mm -hmm. big chunk in my life, or a big period in my life when I, when I, was, it, I, I couldn't do it. Do, yeah. <clears throat> do you like fish? Do I like fish? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I would like fish um, if I could find something for them to represent because I actually like the form of a fish. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like boats, uh, and I like boats because uh, boats, are, again, have been a, a, an image. I've actually, my boats have never taken a very, uh, they, they've actually ended up on the abstract side of my work because uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but I've, I've, mm -hmm. they, they, they tend to be more abstract. A lot of the work I have presently at the Ridgefield and the Ridgefield show are, are of boats. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's from my boat series. But I'll think about fish. You may find a fish in my next show. Who knows? Okay. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but boats certainly have been an important thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the actually is, a, is an area that I'm, I'm, I'm involved with right now. So it, it is developing as we mm -hmm. speak. And what about people? Uh, my portraits, my, 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 you know, most of my portraiture, it really, a lot of it has to deal with my, again, it has to do with me dealing with the world that I live mm -hmm. in. Uh, I'm an introvert. Uh, mm -hmm. I could sit in a studio alone all day and never get involved with people. When I do get involved with people, they, they're curious to me because mm -hmm. they're interesting and they're, mm -hmm. uh, they never give me what, what I think they're going to give me. And so, when I'm, when I'm with people, I have to process the people. And I do a lot of processing of people through portraiture. Uh, I never do portraits of people that I know. I never do portraits of, uh, I never work from photographs. I, I work from my head. And, um, and that allows me to sort of infuse in the images some idea of a person that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of my portraits my the, the the portraiture it, like the goats and I, I don't mean to mm -hmm. compare goats to people but every one of them's a little bit different and that's because they all encompass some different feeling that I'm trying to get into this image that I'm making mm -hmm. um, you know I have uh, pictures that are self portraits I have pictures of of people uh, that I grew up with who were important to me in my life um, I've drawn pictures. I had a lot of a lot of uh, uh, a lot of African American people in my life who were very important to me. I mean, at a very close level, almost like parents or second parents. Second parents. I don't want to insult my mother, who was mm -hmm. dear to me, but they were like second parents to me. And um, and yet, I will draw a portrait which people look at and they say, "Well, she's not 
Afri this is not an African American. Why do you call this after the name of a person who was an African? And it's because I don't. That's not how I see that person. Mm -hmm. I see that person as, as meaning and being something else. And mm -hmm. so, they can be anything. They can. Mm -hmm. I could draw a woman who's a man, a man who's a, a, a good guy, a guy who's a bad guy, and then you, the idea would be bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a picture called the glutton. Mm -hmm. and the glutton is just a, a guy who looked like he was getting more than he needed. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, I have another one uh, entitled the gentleman. Uh, he looks like a gentleman on the surface, but there was something lurking below the surface, and uh, I think I got that in the picture. And. Uh, uh, you know, the, this is sort of how they go. This is my portraits. They're, they're all different, and I, I, they, 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 they allow me to express something that otherwise I couldn't express. And um, there are actually, in this, again, in the Ridgefield show, there are several. You know, that, that show will be up um, until the end of January, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so I hope people can get over there and see them. But there are, um, there are several portraits in there. Most of them are or uh, earlier, and I probably shouldn't say that because <laughs> the title of the show is Recent Works. Mm -hmm. I had to throw a few older works in there mm -hmm. to, keep, to get context for the newer work. Um, and uh, so I had to curate the show and, and I, I, th mm -hmm. I threw in a few older, older works, but um, that's generally why I, mm -hmm. uh, I paint people. Do you like dogs? Uh, I actually do like dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. They always end up looking like goats, though, at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, I have a, uh, a whole series of dogs. I owned a Scotty. Mm -hmm. And the Scotties, you know, Scotties, I, I don't want to insult Scotties. I don't know if they're any looking. But they kind of look like goats. So <laughs> all, of, all of my dog, dog photos always captured uh, my, Scotty, my Scotties when they were in in different temperaments. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be ornery, they could be curious, they could be uh, mad, and I, I, that's what I would try to capture, but uh, uh, they always seem to look like uh, something other than a Scotty. I, I'm, I'm glad they didn't know what they were doing or be <laughs> able to critique my work because they probably wouldn't be happy with what I was, <laughs> what I was painting. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, they always point to something else because I'm always interested in the something else, mm -hmm. not so much the image as much as what it might lead to. And um, you know, so that's that's sort of it. I mean, most of and most of my work has some story related to it. Um, I draw very heavily on stories, mm -hmm. particularly my landscapes. Um, one of the goat pictures uh, you know, that is not in the Ridgefield show. Um, is a picture of a goat walking down a highway. And that came from, uh, um, from the, uh, a biblical story of, uh, of, the, of the scapegoat, the escaping mm -hmm. goat. Uh, the story there is that uh, goats, uh, that the, the Hebrews uh, tribe, the different tribes every, I guess, guess every year, I don't exactly know the specifics, but they would they'd have a ceremony where every year they would allow one goat to get off the hook, essentially, mm -hmm. to get away with, with uh, being guilty without being guilty. And so they would let him off into the wilderness untethered, and he would be able to wander off. So I did a, I did a, a uh, well, I won't call it a series, but several paintings uh, entitled The Scapegoat, mm -hmm. uh, or the, excuse me, it was The Escaping Goat, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the word scapegoat came from. Um, so there's always a story behind it. I have a, a, a series of landscapes that uh, I did. One of the landscapes involved a town of houses. Uh, the houses were all close. There was another house that was, you know, some distance away. And there was a road going between the two houses. And in between the road, on the road, was a man, you couldn't see the whole man, running down the road away from the clump of houses. Um, I don't know what that was about, but, um, you know, I'll speak to somebody else, and they I actually sold that painting, so mm -hmm. if that person looks at it long enough, maybe they can tell me what mm -hmm. it's about. That's <laughs> one of the things I enjoyed. I enjoy talking about my work with other people, mm -hmm. because I often get, 
I get things that I don't even see in my work. Right. And uh, Many interpretations. Many interpretations, and sometimes mm -hmm. other people can see things better than I can see them myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, the, the show that, that's in Ridgefield is up for through the end of the month. A lot mm -hmm. of these works are there. Um, and uh, the show that uh, you referenced earlier uh, at the Center for Contemporary Printmaking, The Bewildered Beast, mm -hmm. is down now. Uh, mm -hmm. But some of the works uh, from that show are at the Ridgefield show right now. So. Good. Yeah. And... and um, we're almost finished, and so if you have anything else to say, this is the time. Well, I don't. I, I appreciated your having me. Yeah. I enjoyed this, um, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, some of this has made sense to some people, this sort of getting into the mind of an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and that is. The, I, 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 I am most impressed by that, because it's not, artists don't always talk. They may paint or whatever, but they... They, they aren't as verbal as you. Well, maybe it's my training from my other lives uh, <laughs> that I had to, I had to uh, be verbal. But uh, I, uh, you know, and it's important because I think some people, uh, what artists do sometimes is very mysterious to people, mm -hmm. and it really shouldn't be. I mean, uh, uh, visual thinking is a form of thinking. Every, um, all of us are visual thinkers. Mm -hmm. We don't always want to admit it. Uh, and a lot of people don't understand how visual they are. You go to sleep at night and you dream in pictures. People who aren't artists dream in pictures. People who are artists dream in pictures. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think we'll end with that. Okay. Well, thank you very much <laughs> so for having me. So I thank me. you very much for coming. Appreciate it's been it. Been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.